And hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Edric Poon and Company, the podcast where anybody can inspire everybody. So I'm your host, Edric, and joining us this week is my very, very good friend. Now, he's known as Coach Shrek to many of you. To, to, to be honest, I still don't know why he's called Shrek, but he'll probably tell me in a bit. But now, Shrek is the master trainer over at Ritual Gym. Ritual is an amazing gym that provides daily workouts that are based on high-intensity interval training, or HIIT. They also provide personalized training, which is amazing. Now, in addition, they've got locations over in Brazil, Spain, Switzerland, USA, and of course, here in Singapore. Now, Ismail and I, well, Shrek, well, I've known him as Ismail. You guys will know him as Shrek. Uh, so he and I were trainees in the army together. And since then, you know, he's always been into sports and fitness. One thing I've always loved about his mindset was that his entire passion you know, into fitness and being so interested in just bettering himself and growing from strength to strength in this particular business, right? Literally and metaphorically, of course. Now, I really, really believe that when we acknowledge, you know, um, our strengths, we feed our passions and we act on them. This is where we'll really, really make an impact together, just like Shrek himself. So without further ado, let's get on to the podcast. The last time actually we met was basically during our cadet days, right? No, actually, um, we, we, that was the last time we hung out. But actually, yeah. the last time we met was when you were still doing certain programs at Void Dex, at the small little multipurpose hall over at St. George's. That was where I was that time around. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Right, right, yeah, this right, was right. quite a while back. You know, ever since then, we've always been in touch. You yes, know, yes, and, yes, um, yes. We the, the the interesting thing was, you know, um, as we got along, you know, uh, uh, in this entire journey, even though even though we haven't really spoken that often, it yeah. still feels as though um, nothing has changed. Nothing about you has changed uh, except for the <laughs> facial hair. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, man. So in, in your case, right, you know, one thing that um, I've always again in, in the intro, I, I did mention it. I've always been a fan of your passion you know toward driving fitness and not only that one thing i didn't mention was your willingness to share your wisdom to share that love for self-improvement you know to better yourself every day and that's something that's always left an impression on me and and it's been great just being able to see you um express yourself uh, through social media, through your workouts, and even through some of the interviews you've done with some media as well, you know. Um, and for those who do not know, all right, um, now Ismail here or Shrek, as uh, he he's known him, uh, he's been known as since two thousand eight, right? Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's now, right. Check out his Instagram, Shrek of Ritual. Okay, now his Instagram has so many different simple workouts that you can use, be it whether it's body weight. Or with, of course, his two favorite cannonballs that he always carries around. Uh, His two kettlebells that he has. I've got a couple myself. And there are a couple of things that I've been following you. You know, the knees over toes kind of thing. Uh, I don't have a slant board. But, you know, thank thank you to the knees over toes guy. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That guy's super awesome. He is, man. He is. uh, mm, Hey, by the way, for your side, right, uh, over at Ritual. Now, uh, business has been very challenging ever since COVID and all this. But... You've taken to outdoor, you've still conducted classes, and uh, Ritual even has the Ritual app as well. So That's right. basically, there's very little excuse to say that there's no more training, there's yeah. no more yeah. you know, exercise and all this. For you, right, how in the world did you start off from us leaving the army, right, all the way? Now, in the army, it's funny, you, you, you were actually posted to an obese company, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. I but started, you weren't obese. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean that's how the system has always been, right? Uh, they always base you on your BMI. Mm. So I mean, I I won't say it's a flaw because it's just a basic way of gauging. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I I'm not gonna say that I wasn't obese, but yeah, I was big, fluffy, or whatever you want to call it back then. Yeah, Dude, so. You were small. <laughs> and that was actually, to, to be honest, that was the beginning of the where I started into fitness. If I were to go way back, I mean, if you were to ask me, like, when did I first step into a gym? If I can remember clearly, it is at the age of 15. Mm. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that was the Club first. Fit, yes, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Everybody starts from there, bro. Our generation, right. I would say, like, at least our generation. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two dollars an entry. How how can you say no? That's right. Yeah. Then <laughs> yes. from there, it what? Um, all of a sudden, you just got hooked on. I mean, were you inspired by bodybuilding? What was it that inspired you? Okay, so when we left the army, I didn't actually go straight into the fitness industry. So what I was doing, I was actually doing uh, security work. So security from from doing uh, cel- counting celebrities and uh, looking after events and stuff. Uh. So, but at the same time, because like doing job was required to sort of look presentable, meaning like look scary enough to ensure security. Yeah. So, I mean, all those times, I mean, obviously I spent quite a bit of time on my free time basically inside the gym. So, and at the same time, that was also where a few of my friends, like close, close buddies saying like, hey, dude, take me to the gym. Right? So I do not know what to do. Uh, to be honest, I was still learning myself, but obviously looking slightly I'm much bigger than them. I mean, th- that was what everybody in 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 our generation they just want to look like big, massive, and yeah. So 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 I continue doing that, and then I start bringing some of these friends and help them out with their training. And then one of them actually mentioned this to me, saying, "Like, dude, why don't you take this up as a career?" So I know there's this thing as personal trainer. I mean, there there was back then there was California Fitness. Uh, Planet Fitness, all those big commercial uh, global gyms, right? So yep. I did hear about the culture in that, which actually the very first thing when I hear was it's, it's very sales driven. So that actually make, makes me a bit hesitant. Like, uh, I'm not so sure if I want to do this, if it requires me to do sales and talking a lot of people. And me being back, back then, I'm not as like, open as I am right now, where I can talk to people, random people and stuff. Back then, I was mm. just like uh, staying in my own cave, don't want to talk to anybody. It's just my own groups of friends. So knowing that what I'm required to do in fitness, I was actually a bit hesitant. Uh, but then eventually, I just find that I really enjoy training my friend. So starting, like like some of them having difficulties in doing movements like pull-ups and stuff, I kind of help them achieve that. And then some of them wanting to lose some weight and then some of them wanting to put on some weight. So I was able to do that even before I was doing fitness or even before I was I entered the fitness industry. And I said, I just realized how much I actually enjoy the idea of teaching and coaching someone. Yeah, so with that, that was where I just decided that, uh, okay, lah, I'm just going to take the plunge. Lah. So uh, first company I actually work for is California Fitness. Yeah, so that was way back in 2007. Yeah. Mm. yeah so, so going into California Fitness, uh, yep, I, I did have a fair share of like uh, the things that I really enjoy and the things that I don't enjoy so much. But I believe uh, being in that company, it was really a stepping stone for me. And then I, I do realize that I am, yeah, the moment I got my very first, cl- first client, and then uh, from from the weeks onward, I start getting more clients and more clients. And then I just realized that I enjoy this to a point where I was actually doing like up to 11 clients a day. So that's that's about 11 hours of back to back personal training. Yeah. And I mean, I mean, yes, at the end of the day, I do feel exhausted. I'm not going to say that I don't feel exhausted at all, but I really enjoy it. So that, that was where I said that I have to take this a bit more serious. So I have to probably upgrade myself. So, I mean, bear in mind, I, like I said, I was, I was doing mechanical engineering in school. So I have no uh, background in fitness and stuff. So, but at that period, during the first year, I already, I know myself that this is something I will do for a very long time. Yeah, and then so from there onwards, that's, that's where I start taking, uh, start planning all my steps of, how I want to actually grow from here and what are the steps I need to do, like taking up courses, taking up, uh, doing some studies and stuff. Yeah. See, again, it's so wonderful to hear the act of service here in the sense that we're doing it not because of the money, 
We're doing it because of a certain passion and a willingness to serve, to be able to see someone get better and better and better, right? And that service, right? That service culture, I would say, right? Mm. Is really yes. what makes, makes that big difference, right? There are some trainers out there. I, I'm sure that we're all doing it. There are some days you wake up and it's like, okay, this one, this client, I'm just, the, the money is there, you know? So we'll, mm. we'll just take it. Yeah. But the difference, I think, between some of the personal trainers versus like, like what you're doing right now as a master coach in that sense is really to kick someone's ass to make sure that they do better for themselves. And mm -hmm. it is part of your responsibility to make sure that they drive, they're driven to the next stage, you know, of getting better and better and better. You know, when, when we were actually talking about like doing this podcast together, we were having this open discussion about what's, what's next, you know, for you, what's interesting about the fitness industry and why is it that um, there are people who quit so we'll get into that in a little bit la. Um, yeah. but you know from your story now from the road you know, that, that you started off as a personal trainer and now becoming a master coach now we, there's one question that we need to address 2008 why do people call you Shrek again? <laughs> okay so uh, when when I entered the industry that's, that's in 2007 right so 2008 uh, was the year that I actually did my very first bodybuilding competition. Ah. Yeah, so doing bodybuilding. So when people look at me now, right, some people will still say, dude, you are a huge man. But I, I, I will always tell them, it's like, no, actually, I'm not big anymore. I used to be bigger. Yeah, so like currently, I'm probably usually walking around maybe about 85 to 90 kg. Uh, but back then, I was walking at about 105, 110 kg. Yes, yeah. So those those were the days where I was uh, very actively uh, doing uh, bodybuilding shows. So huge guy, right? Super yeah. huge guy. It's very scary looking. But actually, if you all know me, I mean, if you know me in the past, I'm not as scary as I look. Uh, I'm actually quite comical. Uh. So uh, that was where one day my best mate, my best man, actually, uh, he came up to me so like. Dude, I got a new name for you. I'm going to call you Shrek from now. <laughs> Which one to call me that? It's like, you cannot be hard. You're, you're not... I mean, you don't scare the shit out of me. I was like, okay, ah, fair enough. Ah. At first, I was annoyed by that. To be honest, I was annoyed by that. It's like Shrek, not intimidating at all. So, But then I just realized like, hey, but that name, I mean, it's easy to remember, right? Yeah, so I was like, yeah, I'm just going to embrace this name. So right. it stuck with me, basically. <laughs> Okay, you know, that's the thing yeah. about nicknames. Uh. It, you yeah. can't give yourself a nickname. Other people exactly, give it to right. you, then it yeah. makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, if yeah. you called your shelf track, I think there's no credibility anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Anyway, so now how does one become a master coach? You know, you, you, you've come a long way already. Is it because of based on experience or um, the fact that there's a scientific background and a certain, I don't know, is there an academic requirement for you to become a I, master coach? How does it work? Honestly, honestly, I don't think. I mean, honestly, for me, I look at this as just a, a term that is given by my company. Yeah, reason is because uh, the things that I do for the company. Yeah, mm -hmm. but in terms of if anybody wants that title of being called a master trainer or master coach out there, I'm sure there's various ways to work towards it. Uh, but generally for me, I'm given, I'm given this... Uh, name or given this position because of the work that I do in the company. So mm. uh, aside from coaching, I mean, I still do coach coach on the ground itself myself. Uh, so aside from coaching, I take care of the fitness department. So in total, I have currently about 30 coaches under me. So my job is to ensure that all these guys stays up to date with what we practice inside the gym. So from day to day, you can expect me like, uh, aside from being at uh, a particular gym, I might be moving around as well, just to ensure that the coaches are well equipped with the knowledge that I want them to have like, in terms of how to coach a client, how to tackle certain situation, or let, let's say this client has an issue, like he can't seem to squat properly. How can we help him to ensure that eventually he get to be able to squat properly? So that's my role. As a as master coach, I ensure that most of my coaches are equipped with the right knowledge to actually 
teach the client. Because here's also the thing. I mean, I, I think probably it's worth for me to mention this. Like, the way we function inside Ritual is not like any other gym. Well, like, like basically in a commercial gym, you go in, you do your own stuff. So, but what mm. we, we do down here is, is basically we, we try to strike the balance in between of personal training and a group class. Yeah, so at any given half an hour, you come in, there will be a session going on. You join in the session. So any coach that is available on that hour will be taking the session. So meaning to say, like, say, remember, you decided to jump into a session today at 3.30. You are doing a session with Sheikh. So after, uh, say, example, tomorrow you come in, you might be doing with another session with uh, Darren. So you see, here's the thing, you will meet all these coaches. So the way we practice down here, we always say it like this. Edric is my client, is your client, is his client, is every one of us client. So he is a client of Ritual and we take care of him. So that's how we put it. So we want to make sure that if I were to teach you how to do your squat in this manner, the other guy will teach you the same exact way. Yeah, I'm not saying the other way is all wrong. Because here's the thing, I mean, fitness is ever evolving, right? So as we all know, everybody practice things in a certain way. Yeah, so do we. I mean, we in ritual also, we practice things in a certain way, but it's a lot more generalized. Generalized in the sense where it's applicable for everybody, from athletes to the everyday guy. Yeah. 